Holy Spirit himself does what? Make it intercession for us with what? Groanings which cannot be uttered. So that's not tones right there because tones can be uttered. Tones, you hear tones. I believe that this starts out in tones, but it ends up in groaning. Why? Because look what the Amplified Bible says. It says here, um, um, where am I? <laughs> verse 18, I mean, verse um, 26. Look what it says. So you too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. Oh, Lord. Why? For we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we are. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplications. Stop right there. Supplications in the Spirit. This is what it means. So when we pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit does meet our supplication. He goes and does that when we pray in tongues. But it don't stop now. And it's a conjunction. And then it says, and please in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. So the Holy Spirit now, job, as you praying, as you stand, spending time with God, as you're being fit, he's now, no, he's now take on the responsibility of going down deep in your spirit where the Holy Spirit, he's there, and he's contacting God through a prayer that you don't speak, but you're yearning. Mm. Did that make sense? In other words, because look what it says here in verse 27. And he that searches the heart, that's the Holy Spirit who's searching the heart, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So in other words, when the Holy Spirit goes down there, and make intercession, that means step in your behalf, and for the saints, according to whatever the will of God is. Whatever the will of God is, the Holy Spirit now can get it as you come, like him, compassionate. We come, we're moved. I now know why people don't experience miracles sometimes. Because they're not moved with compassion. They don't care if the person get up and it's not. They won't even slide over and let somebody sit down in church. Yeah. They don't care if they're, they're in it, the church bill gets paid or not, as long as my bill is paid. You're not moved. But when you change that and start renewing your mind to compassionate, and the Holy Spirit now can dig in there and move you to say something that, um, that, that you didn't really say with your mouth because you really don't know what to say, as you, what, the, what the prayers you are. Now I know what's happening to me. When I'm sitting there looking at um, different shows, you know, the Lord told me, look at Benny Hinn and Oral Roberts, and I go in there in my room, I turn it on and look at healings and people getting healed and all that. And then all of a sudden, man, I started crying. I'm like, why am I crying? And then, then I said, hold nobody don't come in here. What's going on with me? I see, I was just so moved. And then all of a sudden, then it was like, like contractions. You ever had contractions? I ain't, but I heard how, how, how it is. <laughs> it's like a zoom, zoom. In my spirit, it's going on like zoom. Ain't that how it is? It's like, it's like a spiritual contraction on the inside. What is that? It's groaning. It's full of compassion. The reason why Jesus operated in the supernatural is it wasn't because of the knowledge he had. It's because of the compassion in the spirit. If you fill yourself with compassion, miracles got to show up. And miracles are going to hang around. Say amen to that. Amen. amen. So we, we see here. Now, look, look what it says here. Um, uh, before we move on to the next thing, it says, and he, the Amplified Bible says, 27 says, and he who searches the heart of men knows what is the mind of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and what his intent is, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God 
pleads before God. The, the Spirit is going to plead before God in the behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with his word. So in other words, what's in you is more important than what's out you. What, what's in you is more important than what you're saying. That way you need to get into the spirit and let him groan. Sometimes some of y'all ain't cried in years. Some of you need to get in the room and just, and just cry. Now here, let me say this, not fleshly cry. You know, somebody say, I'm going to do this. I heard that. I'm going to be like the lady, the lady on Good Times. You remember Good Times, right, with J.J.? And somebody died, she always show up. Who died, Florida? You know, you know that lady? Don't just do that. Just hollering for nothing, you know. No, be quiet. Wanda, be quiet. <laughs> you got anything to eat? You know, you ain't, you're not really concerned. No, no, because she's church folks. I ain't talking about, it's not the action. It's not your, what, it's not how you look. It's not what you do. It's on the inside. It's, it's shutting everything down, getting before God, praying to the point where compassion begins to come out of you. And now you begin to pray a prayer that will supernaturally do something that you've been praying for five years. It'll happen because you get in the spirit. Say amen to that. Now, I'm trying this on y'all. If y'all looking like that, Lord, what the people going to say on TV? Anybody getting this? All right, what I say? What I say? What I'm preaching about? Compassion. And where is that compassion supposed to be? Amen. And what's the word that we're using for that compassion is what? Groanings. And you're going to groan in the what? Spirit. Amen. And when you groan in the spirit, it's the Holy Spirit himself taking your place and channeling um, emotional compassion in you. Mm. And all of a sudden you're walking around just moved by a situation and then immediately show up. So in other words, if you have a um, certificate of meanness, I ain't talking to you. You're going to have to change that. Because we're talking about the supernatural setting the atmosphere where he can show up. You can't be mean to folks. You, you can't be a person, you know, that don't have compassion. Amen. And let, me, let, me, let me read what compassion is, though, because everybody may not know. Compassion is someone else's heartbreak or heartache and suffering becomes yours with yearning to help them. Someone else's heartache and sufferings become yours with yearning to help you. That's, that's what we released over that bed when I was standing there. Here's some synonyms for compassion. Sympathy. Kindness. Pity. Mercy. Charity, empathy, in other words, the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. Do you have the ability to understand and, and feel the, 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 the feelings of others? Well, when you do, you're going to fill yourself with compassion. And you're going to get your needs met, and everybody come in contact with you, there will be an atmosphere where the miracle is going to show up. The reason why the old covenant... Um, don't see the results that Jesus saw is because the old covenant, everybody wasn't had the compassion of Jesus. The reason why the religious leaders was walking around there on Jesus' day and never seen a miracle, all they're doing was complaining and talking about how much word they knew. The reason why you can be, you can know all the word in the Bible and still don't see a miracle, it's not because you don't know something. It's because you don't have something birthed in you called compassion because compassion is what brings miracles. You need to ask the Lord, Lord, fill me with your compassion. Say amen to that. Amen. Now, I'm not trying to do no hooping and hollering. I'm not trying to get you happy. I'm just trying to impart something so we can have a church. Can you imagine coming in and this church is filled with compassion? Concerned about others is more than you're concerned about yourself. Here's another synonym for compassion. Grace, consideration, 
concerned? You know, are you concerned and considerate about others? Me and my wife, we were down, you know, hanging out a little in Williamsburg this weekend, and then all of a sudden we was coming before we came back, we went to Madonna just in Brunfels, right? Right? And then all of a sudden I'm I'm just mad at my sanctified being in the line. And this lady, you know how Madonna's is, you in this lane and then that lane. And then when you get your order, you really know you really don't know who to go next. I think I go next, you know. And so she was sitting there, she didn't move, so I woo, went on, you know. And I got in back, she was in the back. Boom, boom, boom. You know I was getting ready to come in there. That's what's wrong. Right about. This cussed me out like a child called me the other thing about a child and dog. I was like, oh Lord. Sister said, what's she gonna do? Back up? I said, mm-mm. <laughs> I, I got called by a man back up. I, I was so, I was so disturbed that she, I was considerate. I was concerned. I wanted to do something because the devil was after me. <laughs> and I know, I started thinking, I said, you don't know what that lady going through. You don't even know what, what, what she up against. You don't even know she never experienced love before. So what I did, I got there, paid for my food. I said, what is that lady behind me? What she order? She said, she order, uh, what she said she order? Yeah, two kids me. I said, she doing all that for two kids me? I said, well, I want to pay for that. I don't know. I didn't know. You know, I, I think I might have took her place. Tell her I apologize. And I, I want to pay for her meal. And so we went on. We looked. Sister P, I said, check out. See what she doing, P. <laughs> Sister P was looking at And she was like, mm, looking like she was crazy. So, mm. I said, see? What happened? I ain't had to do that. But something touched her because we are walking in compassion and love because these are God's people, not your people. He didn't say choose the people you're going to be kind to. Mm. Now I see why Jesus was getting whooped and he stopped getting whooped. This man ill has been cut off. Who's getting ready to kill me? Stop. I'm going to heal him because compassion is not concerned who it is he's dealing with. Do we have to love who loves us? Do we have to love everybody in our denomination? Do we have to love everybody that, that treats us right? If we do, you're not operating in his compassion. Because his compassion is not concerned about who it is. He's just so filled with God that he wants to help somebody and do them good. And the anointing and power always shows up. Amen. Here's, here's the last definition of compassion. I'm, I'm, talk about that groaning that, that's on the inside. Um, selflessness. 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 Mm. Selflessness. Selfless. Not self, but selflessness. Not concerning about you. Self-centered. His disciples said, send them all away. Send them all away. We can't feed all these people. Jesus said, ho, ho, ho. What you have? Because Jesus was more concerned. He wasn't selfless. Then. And he, the Bible said he moved with compassion and fed them. He met their needs because of compassion. Are we a church of compassion? Are we a church of the flesh? Because we got up there, miracles in the atmosphere. That's where we're headed. That's where we are. But are we, do we have people in here who are going to short circuit that or enhance that? Do we have people in here who's going to make a vow to become like Jesus? 
be moved with compassion to help people. Move with compassion to heal people. Move with compassion to let the person on the job go who cuts you out. You don't respond this time. Oh, Lord, y'all didn't hear what I'm saying yet. <laughs> Move with compassion to allow, don't allow anybody to get you off because you know if you stay in compassion, immediately they're going to hit you. Immediately they're going to show up. What people are doing is letting their feelings get involved to the point where we think we have a right to treat people a certain way. And what the enemy is doing is robbing your miraculous. He's robbing your supernatural. He don't want you to know that it has something to do with compassion, you know, sympathy. And, and all, 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 you, you, you just, you know, for the sufferings and heart aches of others, you know, you yearn to help them, yearn to bless them, yearn. why I now know why I still love people when they do me wrong. I can't help it. They offended me. They assaulted me and I run them down in the street and hug them and say I love you. What's up? What's up? I, I remember I went once saw one guy and he was upset with me. I don't know what he was upset about, you know, whatever. But anyway, left the church and everything. So he went to this little store, right? I was going there to get some humble off of the car and stuff. So I went in there, right? I saw him, I said, oh, there you go. And then I said, I'm a, oh, I'm going I'm to I'm speak to him, you know. And I went around there, you know, how you doing, right? He came in, you know, how you doing? He, and he saw me, he said, oh, Lord. <laughs> he was speaking, he didn't know with me, right? And when he saw with me, he was like, oh, Lord. I said, what have I done? He said, he won't even speak to me. And I was riding in the car, coming here one day. And he was on the side, on red, at the red light. <laughs> God has set you up. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled down the window. I said, "What's up?" And you know what he said? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, you know. Hey man, I shouldn't treat. I shouldn't. What did he say? I said, uh, that's not right. What I did, you know, how you doing? How you doing today? Have a night. He didn't talk long, but he did. <laughs> but I'm like, see how compassion, if you just, you know, some of y'all did like this. What's your problem? What's your problem? You the one got an issue. I ain't did nothing to you. God don't like us. But Jesus was betrayed it, and he healed the man, healed guys up. Jesus was stole from by Judas. He was stealing out the bag, and he still took communion. Judas betrayed him, but he still washed Judas' feet along with the disciples. If you was in that story, would you have washed Judas' feet or cut it off like Kunka Kunte? <laughs> See, what are you doing? I'm training you to have a mindset of compassion so they can yearn, that you can pray things that you don't have to pray with your mouth. Because all of us want to be seen. Oh, I want to pray. Oh, I thank the Lord. Oh, the Lord is good. He's Alpha. He's the manga, he's the beginning, and he's the end. He's Jehovah Jabber. You want everybody to know you know the words. He's Jehovah Jabber, the Lord, my provider. You've been working on that all day. He's Jehovah Rapha, I heal him. He's El Shaddai. You sound real spiritual. And then the Holy Ghost is like this, with his arm folded, not moving at all, because in the flesh, you can't plead. You never profit in the flesh. You can only profit in the spirit. You can only profit when you're grieved on the inside. Your compassion comes out of you. You're not perfect, but you're filled with compassion for others. That's when he moves. A compassionate person don't even have to pray the name. 
You just walk around here, feel the name. He's moved with compassion, like Jesus. I, I want to show you. I want to show you in the Bible. I'm going to show you in the Bible that I'm not off. I'm going to be like Jesus. Look at John 11 for a minute. John 11, look at that very fast. John 11, give me one hallelujah. John 11, we're talking about the highest kind of prayer is groaning in the spirit. Glory. Higher than tongues. Tongues get you there. Glory to God. John what? Amen, me and my man, we're we together today, boy. Y'all sitting there looking like y'all ain't got nothing. Y'all got some? Yeah. Look, look what it says. Look what it says there. John 11. Now, you know the story when Lazarus died. That was Jesus' friend. He loved the family. Look what it says here. John 11 and verse 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not have died. And Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, and he what? Groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Jesus groaned in the spirit. He was grieved. He was burdened. He was touched. Say amen to that. The Holy Spirit himself takes over your prayer and begins interceding directly to God. He groaned in the spirit to allow the Holy Spirit to channel his emotions of compassion in your spirit with groaning. Groaning in the spirit. That's what Jesus did. He was moved. Look what happened. He said, um, you know, where have you laid them? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Now, that right there was the first scripture I ever learned in the Bible. But I didn't know what it meant. It means Jesus wept. He was moved with compassion on the inside. He, want, he wanted, he was yearning. He felt what they felt. All of a sudden, he wept, and then he said to the Jew, Behold, he loved him. And then look it down in verse, um, in verse 38. And Jesus, therefore, again, what? Groaning in himself, coming to the grave, and was a cave, and the stone laid upon it. Jesus said, Take the stone, take away the stone, Martha, the sister of him was, that was um, dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. And he had been there four days. So in other words, this is a miracle. I mean, this is a miracle. But you know, Jesus has already prayed. Somebody said, what did he do? He groaned. They didn't know he groaned. But look what he said. Jesus said, he said, I said unto thee. So where is that? <laughs> that somebody don't go to church. <laughs> Jesus said to her, I have not thee, what, that thee thou would have believed. Then I said, if you would have believed that thou should have seen the glory of God. And check this out. And then they took away the stone and placed the dead that way the dead were laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I like this, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people that stand by, I said it that thou may believe that thou hast sent me. He said, I thank you that you've heard me. But I want to ask a question. When did he pray? i tell you when he prayed, when he said nothing. When down on the inside, he said everything he needed to say because he was moved with compassion. Mm. And when that compassion came out of him, Y'all, it's over there. Because look what happened. Look what happened. He read it now. And then when he spoke, he said, he said this, look, with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot in gray clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said, 
loose him and let it let him go. What happened? A supernatural miracle show up because Jesus groaned in the spirit because the Holy Spirit takes over his prayer and begin to say, see, it's like warfare. See, the devil, if you say, Lord, deliver me, the devil heard that, he may try to hinder it. You can pray and tell him, but say that, that, that. They're trying to pray and tell him, oh, Lord, something happened, so just send some de demons to try to hinder them. But if you're not saying nothing, just walking around, yo. <laughs> The devil can't even stop you or hinder you anymore because you're not operating with words. You're, you're operating in the spirit. You're, you're, you're contacting God, just walking around, fill up with his compassion, yearning about situations, want everything right, tired of that devil, uh, causing problems and situations, and you want people free. You want humanity free. Somebody lost, you want them saved. Somebody sick, you want them healed. Somebody poor, you want them rich. Somebody, uh. I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. I'm praying that the word was such a blessing to you and that you begin to apply the word to your life so it can change and rearrange things in your life for the good. If you have never received Jesus as your personal savior, um, this is the perfect time to do that. You know, we are saved by grace through faith. It's unearned, undeserved favor. Just believing on Jesus. So if you'd like to receive him, oh, what a wonderful day to receive the Lord. Romans 10 and 9 says, you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So just repeat after me. Lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me, to set me free. Forgive me, come on repeat it, for all of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I've done wrong, right now, I change lordships. I make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. Therefore, I am saved. God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. If you made that confession, um, please email us, write us, let us know so we can send you some free literature to help you in your Christian walk. We love you, and most of all, Jesus loves you. See you soon.